Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this lecture, we're going to continue our look at the mathematicians of the 18th century and actually some in the late 17th century with one of the most amazing families, probably the most amazing family in mathematics in all of history, the amazing Bernoulli family. And this family produced so many advanced mathematicians and scientists that it is just, it is just incredible. So it's not unusual to have multiple mathematicians in a family, and many great mathematicians had fathers who were mathematicians. For example, Etienne and his son Blaise Pascal. And oftentimes when you read a biography of a mathematician, they'll say, oh, they learned mathematics from their father. But very, uh, it's very unusual to have this many mathematicians at this uh high level and especially sustained over three or four or five generations and so in that sense the Bernoulli family was extremely exceptional. They're a Swiss family from the late 17th to the early 18th century uh, to all the way through the 18th century and, and even a little beyond into the 19th century and for three generations plus they included at least nine members who made very significant contributions to mathematics and scientists. Almost all of these that, that you see listed here, almost all of them, were mathematicians. Uh, the only real exception is the, the two Nicholases here at the very beginning of this. Um, and the rest of them were mathematicians and made contributions to mathematics and science. And all the ones that you see pictured here, as well as Nicholas one, this one right here, uh, they all made very significant mathematicians, and three of them, particularly Jacob, Johann, and Jacob, uh, Johann's son Daniel, uh, rank among the very best mathematicians of all times. This is by far the most influential family in the history of mathematics and sciences. Never has there been this much mathematical talent and accomplishment focused in one family sustained over three or even more generations. Now the family uh, originated, at least on the Bernoulli side of the family, uh, originated in uh, Belgium and their ancestors were Calvinist Protestants and they actually had lived in uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands, uh, Nicholas, the progenitor up here, this first Nicholas up at the very top, uh, who lived, uh, as you see, in the, the uh, 17th century. Uh, he had a business in uh, Amsterdam, and he moved that business to Basel, Switzerland. And the reason he moved there is he was fleeing persecution by Spanish rulers of the Netherlands. At this point in time, uh, the Spaniards had taken control of the Netherlands and, and the King of Spain had sent a ruler to the Netherlands. And they were very harsh in their enforcement of loyalty to Spain and strict adherence to Roman Catholicism. And being Calvinist Protestants, uh, that didn't work well with uh, Nicholas Bernoulli, so he took his business and moved it to Switzerland. And then basically all of the uh, his sons then were born in uh, in Switzerland then, I think. Yeah, I think all of these sons. Uh, he actually had many, many children. He had 10 children, and it's only these two brothers here that really became the prominent mathematicians. Um, the common ancestor here, Nicholas, was a member of the town council and a magistrate in Basel, so he became a, a, a person of prominence in the city. He married Margaretha, uh, and who, so that, that was the mother to Jacob and Johann, and she was from a prominent Swiss family, so on their mother's side there, they were definitely uh, Swiss. And uh, they were born in Switzerland, so we consider this a Swiss family. Now, the brothers Jacob and Johann here, uh, and Daniel down here, are the three most prominent members. In addition, all the individuals pictured here, plus this Nicholas I, made major contributions. Um, 
except for the common ancestor Nicholas and perhaps this Nicholas here, all of these made at least some important contributions to mathematics. And if we go down even a couple more generations, there are a couple other family members who, uh, who made some contributions to mathematics and science as well. And um, there, But there are many other family members who did not uh, make contributions to mathematics or science, and they're not listed here. Now, the first to get involved in mathematics was the uh, brother Jacob, the older brother Jacob there, and the younger brother Johann after that. And uh, Jacob studied and worked with Leibniz. Johann studied and worked with Jacob and Leibniz. So these are very much in the tradition of the Leibniz calculus. And these brothers in particular, and the rest of the family as well, did much to promote Leibniz's version of calculus. Johann taught his three sons, also L'Hopital, and he taught Euler as well. So he was very prominent not only for his own contributions, but for, his, uh, for the contribution of his students. Jacob taught Johann. Uh, collectively, this family was involved in every, er, every area of mathematics and the physical sciences from the late 17th and all the way through the entire 18th centuries. They expanded and applied calculus. They looked on differential equations, probability, geometry, logic, heat and light, mathematical physics, hydrostatics, hydrodynamics, kinetic theory of gases, astronomy, ballistics, and many more. And many concepts are named after one of them. So let's start with the oldest, Jacob. Now, sometimes you'll see his name spelled J-A-C-O-B or J-A-K-O-B. Uh, but it's also given in the French form, Jacques, or the English form, James. So, um, you know, being Swiss, they were multilingual. Uh, and I'm not sure which of these names he would have gone by uh, at home. I'm going to use the, the name Jacob. But you will also see him referred to as Jacques or James. Uh, of course, James being an English version, Jacques being French, Jacob being a German version of that name. He was born in 1654 and died in 1705. He, born, he was born and he died in Basel, Switzerland. Now, uh, if you notice, this is, playlist is about mathematicians of the 18th century, and actually he was really a 17th century, late 17th century mathematician, but he's part of and really the start of this uh, great Bernoulli family. So it made sense to put him with the Bernoullis here. And most of the Bernoullis did their work in the 18th century. He's the fifth child of the progenitor, uh, common ancestor Nicholas. Uh, but he was forced to study theology, earning a master's degree in philosophy and a license in theology. And he, but he resented studying religion. He studied mathematics and astronomy on the side. So he was the first in his family to study mathematics seriously, and he did this against the wishes of his family. So he was really, um, you know, swimming upstream there against his family's wishes in studying mathematics and science. After he did this, some others also uh, worked against their family's urgings to do other things, but uh, having Jacob blaze the trail a bit helped. He studied with the followers of Descartes in France, with Hood and Netherlands and with Bull and Hook in England, so he traveled around a bit. Uh, from 1683, he taught in Basel. He had a chair of mathematics at the University of Basel. He taught his younger brother, Johann, and, and together they carefully studied the calculus of Leibniz. He studied and worked with Leibniz and remained in touch with Leibniz. So he expanded and built on calculus. And for a while, Jacob and Johann worked closely together. But later they became rivals, and both of these guys, Jacob and Johann, were, were quick to offend and quick to take offense. Um, once Jacob re realized that his brother Johann was perhaps even a better mathematician than him, and they both rank among the very best of mathematicians, he became very jealous of his younger brother's possibly greater ability, 
and Johan was fierce, and, and they had this brittle, bitter rivalry. Johan was, was fiercely and uh, publicly critical of Jacob and of others. So once again, here's an example of where we get some bitter rivalry. Uh, you can see a couple of different uh, artist renderings of, uh, of Jacob Bernoulli there. So as I've said before, Jacob Bernoulli was very instrumental in promoting calculus and its uses. He suggested the name integral. Uh, Newton talked about the quadrature of curves. Uh, Leibniz talked about calculus summatorius, and he convinced Leibniz to replace that term with the term integral. So we can thank the uh, terminology of integral to Jacob Bernoulli. He pointed out that an extremum, the derivative, could be undefined instead of zero. He wrote a pamphlet on parallels of logic and algebra. He did some work on probability theory, including the law of large numbers. In geometry, he, construct, uh, he did a construction to divide any triangle into four equal areas using a pair of per perpendicular lines. He did early work on the infinite series. He uh, had the Bernoulli inequality, which you can see written here. 1 plus x to the n power is greater than 1 plus n times x uh, for for these for basically from uh, zero um, okay so there's the interval that that is uh, there for and notice this is just one of many things named after Bernoulli However, this one was previously known by Barrow, so he probably shouldn't get credit for that one. He's credited with proving the harmonic series diverges, but that was actually known earlier by Oresme and Mengoli. He worked with some things called Bernoulli numbers. He was did a lot of his most important work looking at various types of curves, especially the catenary. He also worked on the Trasix and Icosochrone cycloids, logarithmic, spir logarithmic spiral, and it, it described many properties of these curves. And another one was the Lemmiscator Bernoulli, R squared equals A cosine of 2 theta. Notice that that's in polar coordinates. He was an early user of polar coordinates. He worked with differential equations. One of the things that he's famous for is the Bernoulli equation, and there, y prime plus p of x times y equals q of x times y double prime. And it was solved with his brother Johann and Leibniz. And he did work on the calculus of variations. <clears throat> now we come to uh, Jacob's little brother, Johann, also known as Jean in French or John in English. He was born in 1667, lived to 1748. So he lived in the latter part of the 17th century and early 18th century. He was the 10th child of Nicholas and was 12 years younger than his brother Jacob. So being quite a bit younger than his brother, uh, his brother was pretty well established as a mathematician uh, by the time Nicholas got old enough to really start studying mathematics. Uh, uh, by the time Johann got old enough to study mathematics. Uh, his father, Nicholas, uh, wanted him to go into business. And he was influenced by his brother, Jacob, to go into mathematics and science. He studied medicine at Basel University, but spent most of his time studying Leibniz's papers on calculus with his brother, Jacob. He collaborated with Jacob, who was his dissertation advisor, and within two years was Jacob's equal, and eventually became even probably better than Jacob. He published on fermentation in 1690, and then after that he taught differential equations, or differential calculus in Geneva. He met mathematicians in Paris, led by Malebranche, and there he met L'Hopital, and he made an arrangement with L'Hopital to teach him and share his discoveries, and we'll talk more about that uh, in just a bit. He solved the catenary problem that his, pro his brother posed, and he worked with Jacob on caustic curves. Of course, as we mentioned in the last slide, uh, he and Jacob had a falling out and became pretty bitter rivals. 
uh, after this. And unfortunately, they, you know, we don't know if, if the competition strove them each to become even better or if they would have gone even further had they gotten along. But they were pretty, uh, um, I would say, fragile egos because they were quick to give offense and quick to, uh, to take offense, both of them. Um, Johan worked on in infinite series. He, de he developed integration by parts. He took new results for trigonometric and hyperbolic functions and applied calculus to them. He took a chair at uh, Groningen in Holland, and he was there for 10 years. So he was in, in Holland or the Netherlands for about 10 years. He married uh, Drothea Faulkner, and he became the father or grandfather of most of the rest of the prominent Bernoullis and the teacher of many of them. Again, I've said he had a bitter rivalry with his brother Jacob. He founded the Calculus of Variations. In 1705, he returned to Basel and eventually ended up taking the chair of mathematics position held by his brother, Jacob, who died in 1705. He was offered but turned down several other university positions, preferring to stay there in Basel. Johann became very involved with the Newton-Leibniz controversy, and he was, uh, some described him as uh, Leibniz's attack dog because he was the one who really uh, went after the letters uh, uh, accusing Newton of, of uh, plagiarizing Leibniz's work and, and got involved in the, in the controversy there. He did work in mechanics, kinetic energy, Ironically, he ended up competing not only with his brother, but also his own son, Daniel. But he taught many important mathematicians. He taught L'Hopital, his nephew, Nicholas, Nicholas I, his three sons, Nicholas II, Daniel I, and Johann II, and really, really his best student and one of the top mathematicians of all time, Leonard Euler. He did as much as anyone advancing the techniques and applications of calculus. On his headstone is uh, put the phrase Archimedes of his age. Now I mentioned L'Hopital, Guillaume or Francois Antoine Marquis de L'Hopital. He was born in 1661 and died in 1704 in France and he was a top mathematician in France at the time. And being a marquis from a wealthy family, he had a title. Uh, he was part of the nobility. He was wealthy. As many nobles, he started out with a military career, but retired early and devoted his time to mathematics and science. And when Bernoulli visited France, he met L'Hopital. Oh, by the way, uh, I've spelled the, the word, his name, L-H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L. That's the way he would have spelled it. Uh, but today, most people in his family will drop the S. There may be a little accent over the O. The S is silent either way you say it. It's L'Hopital. And he, uh, the thing that he is most important for is writing the first calculus textbook. Up to that point, all of calculus that had been published was in the form of research journals, uh, monographs, and so forth. Not really... It was designed for other mathematicians to share these new techniques. It was not designed to teach a broader audience. And so L'Hopital wrote the first calculus textbook. It was uh, in use for many years. And it was also the sort of served a, as a blueprint for later books as well. But it's really interesting something about this. Now L'Hopital was a good mathematician himself, but probably his most uh, best thing he did was observe that Johann Bernoulli was a great mathematician. And he hired Bernoulli to teach him calculus and to share his results. For example, L'Hopital is probably most famous today for L'Hopital's rule. It appeared first in his textbook. But long after the deaths, of L'Hopital and Johann Bernoulli, it has been discovered that this rule is actually due to Johann Bernoulli, as is most of L'Hopital's textbook. Now, they had an interesting arrangement because L'Hopital agreed to pay 
first of all, he hired him to teach him some private lessons. And then later on, he uh, hired, paid, he put him on retainer. In other words, L'Hopital paid Johann Bernoulli a salary, a pretty good salary, to share his results and teach L'Hopital from time to time and to not publish those results. So L'Hopital was basically uh, buying Bernoulli's work. Bernoulli was okay with that because the putty was pretty good, apparently. And Johan apparently agreed to not claim the work as his own during L'Hopital's lifetime. After L'Hopital died, Bernoulli then, Johan Bernoulli then claimed that L'Hopital's textbook was mostly his own work. Uh, that was not really uh, seen as the truth by people during uh, Johann's lifetime uh, because he also claimed some other things were his own work that really weren't. Uh, there was some dispute between uh, his work and his son Daniel's work, in which case he claimed, Johann claimed that he did it first, but actually his son Daniel did. But in this case, Johann was correct, but it wasn't really found out for sure until the 1920s when uh, math historians got hold of some of Johann Bernoulli's lecture notes, and that clearly shows that um, predating uh, L'Hopital's text, uh, we have essentially the same thing in Johann Bernoulli's uh, notebooks. So L'Hopital's textbook is really mostly Johann Bernoulli's work. Nevertheless, L'Hopital was an accomplished mathematician. He did correct at least one error of Bernoulli's, and he is responsible for putting together the first uh, calculus textbook. So his, he's so much intertwined with uh, Johann Bernoulli there. Now, Nicholas I Bernoulli is the ne nephew of Jacob and Johann. He was the son of Nicholas, grandson of Nicholas. And uh, his name was Nicholas, so three Nicholases in a row there. He was born in 1687, died in 1759 at Basel, Switzerland. Um, he studied with his uncles, especially Johann. He eventually got a chair of mathematics at Padua, Italy. He was actually the chair that was uh, at Galileo's quite a ways back. And he, for six years, he held that chair. Um, he then got later got uh, two chairs at Basel, the chair of logic and the chair of law. He studied probability, geometry, differential equations, and most of his work, rather than being published in journals like uh, his uncle's, most of his work is found in his correspondence, and he corresponded quite a bit, uh, particularly with uh, Montmort and Euler. He was able to do make a few mathematical uh, contributions. He solved infinite sum of reciprocals of squares, which is something that both his uncle Jacob and Leibniz weren't able to solve. He edited Jacob Bernoulli's complete works and supplemented with results from Jacob's diary. So he uh, put together the, the definitive edition of all of Jacob's uh, contributions. And that's he's important for that as well. So he is part of the second generation of Bernoulli's. And these were all students of Johann. So Nicholas was Johann's nephew. But then we have three sons of Johann, Nicholas II, Daniel, and Johann II. Nicholas II, as you see pictured in the top picture here, was the favorite son of Johann. He was born in 1695 and died in 1726. He entered the University of Basel at 13. He studied mathematics and law, which is a pretty typical trend for the Bernoullis. He assisted his father with his correspondence, and so because of that, he was right in the middle of the Newton-Leibniz dispute. Uh, and because he was doing this, he did a lot of research into, uh, you know, making the case for Leibniz's version of calculus and pointing out things that he didn't think were as good in Newton's. And along that that uh, path, he discovered some interesting mathematics, particularly a problem of trajectories, some differential equations. He also did some work in probability. He took a chair of mathematics at St. Petersburg at the same time. Uh, time as his brother uh, Daniel, uh, but died within a year there. Daniel, 
the middle of the three sons of Johann, was born in 1700 and lived in 1782. He was very prominent. I'm going to save talking about him to the next slide. Johann II is pictured here uh, on the bottom picture here. <clears throat> He's the youngest of the three sons of Johann. He was born in 1710 and died in 1790. He is mainly work was done in heat and light. He has a distinction of winning the prize of the Paris Academy three times, and he eventually took over his father's chair of mathematics at Basel University when Johann uh, Sr. died. The most prominent of those three sons, though, of, or well, of any of them in that second generation was Daniel. And really, the, the two original brothers, Jacob and Johann, along with Daniel, are definitely the, the powerhouses of the family, uh, powerhouses of a powerhouse family. He was born in 1700, died in 1782. He was born in the Netherlands when his father was working there, but he died in Basel, Switzerland. And Johann tried to get Daniel to go into business. It's kind of ironic because Johann's father wanted him to go into business, and he resisted it greatly and eventually made his way into mathematics, whereas Daniel, um, he wanted his son Daniel to go into business. Daniel resisted that just as fiercely as his father did, and he ended up going to mathematics. Um, he attended Basel University at the age of 13. He learned calculus from his older brother Nicholas and his father Johann. He completed a doctorate in medicine. He moved to Venice and practiced medicine there, worked on some mathematics. In 1725, he became the chair of mathematics at St. Petersburg at the same time as his brother Nicholas, too. So they both were given chairs of mathematics there. Uh, unfortunately, he, his brother died within a year. And uh, Daniel was very uh, depressed. He didn't like the climate in, uh, in St. Petersburg. And uh, he was he was homesick for Switzerland. He just didn't like it. He was missed his brother who just died, and so he he basically was writing to his father, trying to, talking about maybe find a way out of there. Well, Johann then sent him uh, made arrangements for Johann's greatest student, Euler, to go to Saint Petersburg and collaborate with him. And during that time, when Daniel and Yo and and uh, Euler were collaborating is when Daniel did his best work. However, in 1734, he returned to Basel. He was the co-winner of the grand prize for the Paris Academy with his father. Now, unfortunately, this called a falling out with Johann. Remember, we talked about how Johann was, was quick to take offense and quick to give offense, and it just really upset him that his son could be considered his equal, and that just, just irritated him. And so he ended up, uh, you know, really f had a falling out with his son. Who wouldn't even, even though he'd moved back to Basel, they were in the same town. He wouldn't let him come come to his house and so forth. Uh, again, an unfortunate thing. Apparently, uh, this was not, um, Daniel didn't do anything to bring this on. And apparently he maybe even did some things to try to reconcile with his father. You can see a couple of pictures of uh Daniel over there on the right, a couple of uh, drawings, paintings there of him. He did some work early on about the game of Pharaoh with probability, he did some work with differential equations, but he's most known for his hydrodynamics, the flow of water, blood and blood pressure, fluid flow and pressure, density, velocities. And he worked with kinetic theory of gases and the Bernoulli principle, which just talks about the the hydrodyn uh, the dynamics of of uh, fluid dynamics of air and how that's basically the principle that 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 explains how birds and airplanes and so forth fly so that's named after daniel um he worked with vibrations and oscillations and he was also important because he uh did accept newtonian physics and but applied Leibniz-style calculus to it. So now uh, starting to bring some of the Newtonian ideas uh, back into the family and into, uh, into the rest of Europe outside of England. Now there was a third generation of Bernoullis. Uh, this next generations were the son, 
sons of Johann II and grandsons of Johann. Uh, the oldest of the three was Johann III, born in 1744 to 1804, 1807, when he died. He was a child prodigy, graduated with his bachelor's at 14. He studied law and mathematics, as many of the other Bernoullis did. He did work in astronomy and probability theory. Daniel II was another mathematician, lived from 1751 to 1834, uh, not quite as prominent as the rest. Jacob II lived from 1759 to 1789, um, and he studied law and mathematics, mathematical physics, elasticity, hydrostatics, ballistics. He moved to St. Petersburg, ended up marrying a granddaughter of Euler, but unfortunately he dried uh, from drowning while swimming in the rivers there near St. Petersburg. And just briefly, I do want to mention the family continued on after this for at least a couple more generations, maybe not nearly as prominent mathematicians as those earlier, but uh, the son of Daniel II was Christoph, and he lived from 1782 to 1863, and Jean-Gustave, from 1811 to 1863, was a son of Christoph. So we have the Bernoulli stretching from the late 17th century all the way through the mid-19th century. We have Bernoullis contributing to mathematics. And many, many of these were very important. And once again, here is the family tree, and we see many of these with a couple more generations coming down from Daniel 2 here that I just mentioned. But of all of these, none of them really uh, were as great as the original two brothers, Jacob and Johann, and uh, the one from the next generation there, Daniel. But collectively, again, this is the most amazing uh, scientific mathematical family in, in the history of the world. Just just amazing. Those three, Jacob, Johann, and Daniel, rate, rate right up there with the best mathematicians of all times. And many of these others that I've mentioned also rate up there very, very high, uh, highly as well. So the amazing Bernoulli family. They made great contributions to uh, mathematics and science and really propelled calculus in, in particular forward through the 18th century.